scabbed. Congratulations on your first Bill Russell MVP award. I wish I could be there to give you the award myself, but I'm glad I could share this message with you regardless. You're a great person and player. Congratulations to you and your team. Have fun. But to win it in Boston, what? How do you sum up what we witnessed of this game six? Well, what, what Stefan said it best. I mean, to do it here in this building, the history, the tradition, the championships, uh, and for him to, to win and his team to win here. He had a signature game uh, in game four, had a tough one at home, came back, went it on the road here. Um, just masterful. I mean, it was a great, it was really, you know, a, a, a reoccurring theme in terms of how they've gone about winning, forcing turnovers, suffocating defense, only holding Boston to 17 points in that second quarter. That second quarter pretty much what sealed the deal for Golden State, but just a fantastic performance and uh, another historical moment in a building and in a, in a city that's had plenty. Yeah, it is. And for me, we all got a chance to watch it. And you said it best. I think it was their defense this time. And we talk about an era of shooting threes and scoring. It was 103 to 90. Yes. And back to old school where every possession count. And I think for the Boston Celtics, they're going to be kicking themselves because when you give the ball away 22 times yeah. in the finals, Isaiah and Grant, that's hard to come. And then I think you had guys that had championship experience and pedigree, and they came and played. Steph, obviously, leadership with this guy, Draymond Green, couldn't hit shots, but looked like he did tonight, 12, 12, and 8. The Warriors would go on a 21 to 0 run. Yeah, and, and a lot of it really did have to do with their defense. You know, the, these six games, you know, they've, they've held Boston to 100 or less, uh, you know, in five of the six. And, you know, their defense came to play. And offensively, you know, when they needed buckets, they got it really from everywhere. Um, you know, five, six guys were shooting the ball well, playing good. And I thought when they put Boston on their heels, Boston was never, ever, never able to recover because of <clears throat> shots like that. <laughs> was there ever any doubt, Grant, that the greatest shooter the game has ever seen would do something like this after his Game 5 performance? Yeah, there was no doubt. We talked about in the pregame. We knew he'd come out and play well. It was interesting. Boston got off to a good start. You know, it looked like they, you knew being at home, they were going to come out and try to punch him in the mouth. But... A championship experience paid off, got back in the game, and cruising here in the second half. Yeah, uh, I hate to spoil it, it but a whole lot of Steph Curry highlights. It here. was. I mean, <laughs> Steph was sitting those shots. We Ooh, were in the that back was a tough one there, right? Boom. They were going in hard, and, and all these guys talked about it. Those young guys came and stepped up there. We say others. They had 21 oh, points oh. off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> they go Nasty Curry. I love it. <laughs> That's a great name, Nasty Curry. <laughs> Marcus Smart kicking it out to Jalen Brown for three on the other end. Then Al Horford getting the reverse layup and the foul to go. He'd make this free throw and a huge contribution from him. Yeah, Al Horford, 19 and 14, hit a bunch of threes, four for five. Kept him, got him back in the game there in the third, early fourth quarter. Jalen Brown with 34 points in this game. Hey, see? Hey, he, I, I thought Jalen played well, and, you know, he, he had turnovers, but, you know, his offense kept him in the game. But, again, Golden State was just – they were just too good. And Curry, anytime you leave him out on the island with a center, guess what's getting ready to happen? <laughs> I'm getting ready to take you. 34 points, 6 of 11 from deep, uh, uh -oh, 7 rebounds, uh -oh. and 7 assists. That's a big one, boy. Somebody got to come over there. That's Steph Curry. I'll try. Give the Boston Celtics a lot of credit. They, they had a great season. Night, night, nasty Curry. <laughs> <laughs> My one-year-old and Stephen Curry. Yeah, let's go stick. Night, night. Think so? Let's go stick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Smitty, that might make you under the rim. Uh, I thought you were going to retire. <laughs> and those lucky purple shoes. And those lucky purple shoes. paid off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he came out with the superstition. And he said, you know what? I played good in them last time here, so I'm going to put on another show when I put them on again. You, you did like the 43? All right, I'm going to give you 34 <laughs> this time. The Warriors beat the Celtics not only in game six in Boston, but in the NBA Finals, their fourth championship in eight seasons.
Ahead of this series, 125 combined games of experience in the NBA Finals for the Warriors. Not a single one for the Celtics. Now, they've played in six of them. So let's sum up the Celtics season that was. Zeke, how would you do so? I would say they had a great season. And uh, uh, when the season started, no one picked the Celtics to be in the NBA Finals. Um, they had a new coach. And not only did they have a new coach, but two of their star players, actually the three star players, when you talk about Brown, Tatum, you know, they, they were really going at it. And, you know, they got called out by Smart. They were having a really rough time. Eme brought them back together. And now they ended up in the finals. And this is a very young group here. Now, can they stay together? Will they overcome their obstacles? We look at this series and we say, what, what held them back? Well, what held them back was turnovers, right? They, they threw the ball away again tonight 22 times. And, you know, this is a, a, a team that probably averaged, you know, close to 18 to 20 turnovers throughout the course of the finals. And you're not going to win championship games that way. So can they get better? Yes. Will they get better? remains to be seen. Smitty, Grant, what does the future hold here in Boston? I think the blueprint is there. A, a amazing job at Ime Udoka, Damon Stoudemire, and that entire coaching staff. The organizations did a great job. I think next is for them is finding a way. You can't turn it over. You said the turnovers. It was 353. That's fifth all time mm. having that many turnovers. And I think depth. I mean, you start to look at that roster. I think they got to add some pieces. But I, I take my hat off to Robert Williams, Al Horford, and obviously this whole entire group, Smart, Tatum, and Brown. They did a phenomenal job to be able to turn it around like you did. Not a lot of young teams go yeah, through that type yeah. of adversity and can turn around and get to this point, so kudos to them. Yeah, I mean, 16 and 27, I think, at, at the new year. And, uh, you know, all the adversity they talked about, they lost in the first round last season. Uh, but to turn things around, to build this foundation, uh, they have a lot to build on. Got young players, a lot of runway in front of them. Uh, they do, though, have to get better. And, you know, the East is tough. And you think of Miami, you know, Brooklyn maybe gets their act together. Milwaukee, you know, they didn't have Middleton in the play. I mean, so it's not going to be easy next year, and there's no guarantee they can get back to this point. Uh, but they have a chance. This experience, uh, I think, will make them better. Uh, but they need to add a few pieces, like you said, maybe a, a, another score off the bench, a guard, a point guard who maybe can help, you know, run the offense better. There's some flaws in this roster, and in spite of those flaws, they got to the, to the NBA Finals and lost in Game 6. And what, what we see is that they, we thought they had that, that difference maker in terms of that superstar player that was emerging, right? like the Durant or the LeBron or the Giannis or the Steph. You know, that, that one guy, we, we, we hoped and thought that there was going to be Tatum. But when it got to this stage, he wasn't that. Now, can he become that? Yes. He has to keep working. Our postgame coverage continues from Boston after the break as the Warriors have beat the Celtics at the TD Garden. Nasty Curry! <laughs> their fourth championship in eight seasons. Stay with us. Let the celebration begin. With four titles in the last eight years, the run is not done. The Golden State Warriors once again are NBA champions in 2022. The base team is the best team again. That they are. And as I get your final thoughts, this not a championship, Isaiah, a dynasty. You, you have to give credit where credit is due. And this is a dynasty. When you look at this era of basketball, what they've been able to accomplish, not only is it a dynasty, what they've been able to accomplish, but the way they've gone about doing it. In this championship, there were doubters all around, even some probably within their organization after the last two years that they had. We never thought that they would probably be back on this stage collectively like this again, but yet here they are. So you have to give them credit. And this probably was, they'll probably look back on it and say, you know, years from now, this probably was the toughest championship that they had to win. 
because of the two years prior and the injuries that they had and the sustained believability that they needed to get to this point where most organizations, most teams, most players, they get satisfied or they quit and stop and they break it up. This team went through two terrible years, didn't fire the coach, didn't trade the players, developed young people, and got better, and here they are. And I think for me the, the dynasty, which is scary, is and then you add Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody, and Grant, you said a confident Andrew Wiggins to go along with that big three. That's what's really scary because usually a dynasty, you start picking away and chipping away saying it's a possibility this is going to disintegrate. But <laughs> Wiseman, a, a number one pick, and the way Kaminga played that time. Kaminga. That time. He this, didn't even play in this series. This, is, this, is, this could Oof. be still scary. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you think about the, the character – and, and the culture of, of Golden State. And to go through those lean years, and we talked with everybody up here today, and, like, that's not easy. It's one thing when you're winning and you're expected to win. It's easy to, to, to buy in. Mm -hmm. But to, to maintain that culture and that character, even when you have the worst record in the NBA, and continue to do things the right way, continue to develop, draft well, sign free agents, you know, now that they're back, I mean, there's a chance. And also, too, to think, too, since they last were here, how much the league has changed. Mm. And, you know, you thought about all those those battles against Cleveland and LeBron James and then the emergence of Toronto that last year. But it feels like so much has happened. So many teams have emerged. So many new start Giannis and Milwaukee last year. And so just to think that they're able to get back and reclaim and there's a strong chance that, you know, we'll be right back here again next year watching them in the finals. That belief, that know-how, that collective know-how, those young guys and those young guys getting – and don't forget about Clay. I think Clay mm -hmm. will be better. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. just getting through this year healthy, getting confident with his body, having time off, and then able to ramp up when everyone else ramps up next season – like, as good as they've been, there's a real possibility <laughs> that they'll be better wow. next season. What a run. What a season. It's been a good year. To sit alongside champions, <laughs> Hall of Famers. I never take it for granted. He's Isaiah Thomas. He's Steve Smith. I, I'm He's Grant Hill. <laughs> I'm Kristen Ledlow. <laughs> Time for us. Look at my fish yeah. fillet. Look at my fish fillet. Hey. Put a shirt on, Zeke. Put a shirt on. Zeke, hey. 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 <laughs> you got a little tiny bite. <laughs> my Speedos. In the history of the NBA Finals, Game 6s have featured some of the greatest performances in league history. Who will make their moment in this year's Game 6? Tatum gets a good look for three. That's good. Get this building on fire. Back to Steph. Three on the way. Got it. Golden State looking to push at every opportunity. Thread the needle and Wiggins bags it in. Golden State scored 21 in a row. Draymond Green orchestrating. Oh, what a pass. And Thompson with the bankage. And the Warriors up by 18 with the championship insight. Curry left wing three walked into it. Perfect. Some Curry chaos here on the third. Horford catches down low and he's mauled. Shots go and one. Wiggins inside the paint and paint throws it down. Curry on the out of bounds and drops in a triple. That's a killer. That's big. That is huge. And that'll do it. It's over. The Golden State Warriors return to a familiar place. They're on top of the NBA world. The fourth title in eight years. The Dubs dynasty is still very much alive. The emotions just pouring out. Congratulations. You are the 2022 NBA champions.